In spycraft, you want to use things that are familiar to a casual glance. For instance, you know that's a Victorinox knife, you know that's a pack of cigarettes, you know this is a can of soda. Uh, it's a smaller size can, by the way. It's 7.5 fluid ounces, not full size can. I, I'm not quite sure what they call these, but if you're wondering why does that look so small, it's because it's 7.5 ounce or 222 milliliters. These are all iconic. Uh, you can look at them and casually, at a casual glance looking at these, you know exactly what they are. You've seen them a million times before, uh, you know what to expect. Uh, so making spy craft items out of these uh, helps keep them camouflaged or de decoy. These two are spy scopes. Uh, this is truly a Victorinox knife. However, this one is actually a monocular. If you look right here, you'll see that there's a internal element so that when you hold this up to your mouth as if you were going to take a drink, you can move it up just a couple of inches to your eye and take a quick glance at an angle. It even looks like you're drinking from it because you hold it at an angle. Uh, internally, I have a monocular. It's made by Sony, believe it or not. Most people don't even know that Sony once made monoculars. I put some uh, camo tape around the bottom here just sort of for a little bit of grip. This is the exact same monocular uh, which has the laser uh, mounting mechanism on top. I also have a protective dust cap on this end, uh, the rubber eye cup, and then the black ball chain is a reverse monopod. What you do is you unravel this, you let it, let it dangle to the floor, you step on it, and then you pull it taut, and that acts as a uh, monopod effectively. Uh, it's not perfect, but it does reduce shake somewhat, and it takes up very little space in your pocket compared to a true monopod. You can't use string, by the way. You have to use a metal chain because you don't want it to have any, any play, any give. This is a very small AAA battery laser, green laser, so it has very high power, works at a great distance, and what I like about it is that it uh, can be used as a signaling mechanism. I've made this mount mechanism on top of the laser, and I can then Velcro this on, and I can use the monocular to do sort of range uh, sighting to make sure I'm shooting the laser exactly where I want it to go. This is now just straight laser. Contact, off, contact, off, contact. Zooming in. Contact, off, contact, off, contact. You can actually see it on all of the building too. Contact, no contact. Detaching monocular, handheld aiming, so that was the uh, Coke can monocular, and then this looks like a pack of cigarettes, right? Check it out. You open it up, 
and you see here it's actually a spy scope. This one uses a different monocular. It's a Nikon monocular, so Nikon quality optics, very high quality. Uh, it's a 6x30, no, I'm sorry, it says right here, 6x15 uh, it looks like, 7.5 uh, field of vision, made in Japan, very high quality optics. It's kind of an interesting design. This is the focus mechanism. Uh, you have either normal monocular use, or when you pivot this around, it then becomes sort of a, not quite a microscope, but a long-range viewer. So if you wanted to look at little insignia from a few feet away, uh, you can do it. This fits quite nicely inside the cigarette pack. Both of these, I designed them out of things that you would hold up to your mouth uh, so that you can look very casually, say you're in a park doing uh, surveillance and you just need to take a quick glance and then bring this back down to your mouth and no one will know that you're actually uh, doing spy work. Both of these are very easy to make, by the way. Um, it may be difficult to find this particular monocular from Nikon. I had to buy it from Japan. Uh, I don't think they sell it in the U.S. any longer, but it's called Monocular 6x15D Metallic, made by Nikon. Uh, you're never going to find this monocular by Sony because it's been out of production now for decades, but there are many monoculars that you can strip down by gutting their exterior and getting down to their inner elements. Notice this glass goes all the way across uh, this extra tape that I put on the outside. The Gorilla Camo Tape helps add a little bit of protection against uh, drops and knocks. But you can fit all sorts of different monoculars. In fact, I could even fit one of my bigger monoculars into a full-size can of soda. Uh, so I may work on some other models in the future. But this is basically, I just enlarged the drinking hole. And then the way I cut out the bottom so cleanly, what I did is I, I took one of these cans, I took one of my Mac razor knives, and I've, I scored the intersection I uh, went around this circumference slowly, bit by bit, and then using a knife, I punched out this section. This is what it looks like after I punched it out with the knife. Uh, you can polish these and turn them into little parabolic dishes to start fires. I actually show how I ignited some uh, paper, specifically a uh, dollar bill, because I figured it would be interesting to see if you could ignite something you'd have on your person all the time. Uh, by shining these with polish, uh, if you were stuck in a survival situation, they say you can take uh, silt from a river. So if you can find a stream or a river, you can polish this into a shiny surface. Once you score it, you punch it out, you extract it. I used a file to smooth it so I'm not going to scratch myself. Uh, and then this one was as simple as cutting out, also using the razor knife, a little window to put the optics through. I'm going to put it in the long-range mode as opposed to the uh, close-focus mode. You stick it in, and you can hold it up to your eye. You can focus it with this. The wheel is exposed, and then you batten down the hatches when you want to con conceal it. So here you can also fold the bottom window flap inward so that it's ready to go. You just open it up, hold it up to your eye. I guess people, when they grab cigarettes, I don't smoke, but if you grab cigarettes from your pack, out of, from your mouth, I guess you open the top and then you raise this up to your mouth. I suppose you could paint fake cigarettes here too. Uh, I don't own cigarettes, so I can't do that, but that would be another way to make it perhaps even better still. And I, made, I cut the paper so that you can even focus the mechanism even while it's inside here. On the uh, other monocular, you have to focus it before you insert it in the can. I'll show you the uh, can of Coke in action to give you an idea of what, what kind of magnification it can offer. So it's hard to position, but here's what the view through the... Coca-Cola monocular spy scope looks like. Let me move the camera up to give you an idea of what you're looking at. That building, the top terrace.
So this is the view of the building. Coca-Cola can. It's difficult to precisely align it, but it acts as an excellent spy scope. So this is camera zoomed in, this is camera zoomed out, you can see some vignetting because uh, the eyepiece of the monocular doesn't fill the entire view. Now to give you an idea of what the view without the monocular is, that's the building I'm looking at. Here it is through the spy monocular. I'll now zoom back by pulling the tripod away. And as you see, there's the Coca Cola can. This kind of videography is called a focal. Basically, just put the eyepiece exactly where your eye would go. With uh, this one, the monocular from Nikon, it's possible to make it even smaller to fit it into something like an Altoids tin uh, or maybe even a Tic Tacs box, believe it or not. Because uh, the actual optical element, first off, you don't really need this part. That's only if you're doing close range work. So you, you see. It'll sort of just barely fit into a Tic Tac box. It's a little thicker though, but I discovered how to open these up and I'll show you in case you want to buy one. Uh, you put this in the side mode and then you pinch the bottom section. And then while you pinch it, you can sort of unsnap it. Of course, I'm going to do it now and it's going to fly apart across the room, but let's see. go. Take off the top. So you see here, this is the front objective. It's a roof prism design. And there's some glue that holds everything in place here. It also just kind of, kind of stays together with friction, but once I finalize this, I'll put new pieces of glue in there. So the light comes in here, it gets condensed, and then it goes into this element, which can be pulled out. This is the roof prism assembly, which helps correct the image for height and orientation. This is the focus, me focus mechanism. However, if you wanted to make this as small as possible, you could extract the focus wheel and rely on just holding the rubber part to do your focusing. Stick that back on. And then when you get it down to this size, you're almost the width of the Tic Tac box or an Altoids tin. Uh, so if you're interested in making one of these even smaller, uh, can be done. I don't smoke, by the way, uh, but I collected this just out of the garbage from somebody else. Uh, I don't eat, drink Coca-Cola either, but you want to go with iconic looking items for decoy items so that anyone taking a casual glance will think they're the real thing. the focus mechanism. Everything works tip-top shape. I'm going to leave it in the camouflage mode by leaving the window area shut. And make, you can add a little Velcro here if you want to be dead sure that it's going to stay shut in your pocket. Here's my collection of monoculars, little mini spy scopes. 
I've collected over the years. I wanted to point out that if you want to get into this, you really want to stick to good names such as uh, Nikon. I have several Nikons. Carl Zeiss make very good ones. Uh, Vortex, company you may not have heard of, make pretty good ones. Steiner, Zenray Optics. Uh, stay away from the no names. They're pretty junky. Occasionally you find one that's not too bad. Uh, this is a common one you see on the web a lot. This little spy scope made in Russia uh, gets a lot of advertisements. It's absolutely optically junk though, so I do not recommend that. I wanted to see what it looked like though, uh, so now I know and you should stay away from that. But uh, it's kind of a cool hobby. I recommend it.